we go. What is up, y'all? Good morning to all of you all, all of that stuff like that. Hope you all are having a wonderful day. Um, again, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, whichever part of the world that you are in. Um, if you're new, again, make sure you follow me on all my social media sites. Follow me on this one. Make sure you hit that follow button. Um, hit that subscribe button. All of that stuff like that. Today, we had a wonderful day yesterday. Happy Friday from yesterday. Friday, yesterday, all that good stuff like that right there. Whatever. Um, I just, it's Saturday, but I'm just saying happy Friday from yesterday. Whatever. Woke up this morning because I just had a lot of things on my mind and I just wanted to say what I need to say so I can go finish the rest of my day. Anyways, you know, I thought about this this morning because I was strolling up and down my timeline while I was laying in my bed. And I just saw so many, you know, white people was very, were very upset with the fact of what Colin Kaepernick has done. But you fail to realize that this has been in the working for two years. They just now made him the face of their campaign ad for Nike. So it's like you're mad burning things up and all kind of things of that nature and just doing stupid stuff like that. Burning up your thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars worth of stuff and all kind of things of that nature. And I'm just sitting up here looking like, why are you burning up your money? Burning up sneakers and Nikes and things like that. Then on top of that, you got black people out here that's doing the same thing too. Oh, look at that nigger. Look at that nigger. He's just out here. He's thinking he's time. He's just, oh, he's just messing up. Let me tell you something. This is the problem. You don't have to cooning and ruining with all these other people because it's making waves. No, I just you get I get tired of black folks doing that. We don't stand together, baby. We we mad at we mad at Jamal Bryant. Because Jamal Bryant is down there in Washington, DC, standing for people that look like you. What a monumental and historic moment for all of us as the sons and daughters of Richard Allen to know that the legacy extends itself to be a liberating and a reconciling people. For those of you who do not know who we are as members of the African Methodist Episcopal Church, we are the forerunners of Colin Kaepernick because it was in a small church in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania that our founder Richard Allen found himself taking a knee. And because he took a knee, the powers that be that called themselves the predated white evangelical Christians tapped him on his shoulder and told him to get up. And when he got up, he left out and went two blocks down and started a revolution that still is continuing today. Had they not operated in white supremacy then, we wouldn't be here today. But we are those who refuse to be bought out prophets but those who will clear our voices and cry loud and spare not. We're here because this week something critical happened. Colin Kaepernick said, believe in something enough that you're willing to sacrifice everything. And the question that we've got to ask ourselves is how is Nike more prophetic than black preachers? How would Nike be prepared to make such a risk that they would lose over $1.3 billion in one day, knowing that there would be sectors of this community that would disagree, would be offended. Why? Because of the cause of that which is right. Well, we're here under this blistering sun to say to conscientious Christians all over the country, just... Nobody told us the road was going to be easy, but I don't believe he's brought us this far to leave us now. Just do it. When Martin Luther King Jr. had his own home bombed, but in spite of that, he made up in his mind, I'm not going to let nobody turn us around. He made up in his mind. Just do it. When Jesse Lewis Jackson in 1984 and 1988 decided he would run for president when it was unpopular and he had no sponsors, he made up in his mind he would just do it. 
when Barack Hussein Obama in 2008 and 2012 made up in his mind that he would not be judged based off of the color of his skin but the content of his character. He rose to the presidency because he was committed to just do it. When the poison citizens of Flint, Michigan refused to be contaminated by what the Republican governor put through their pipeline, they rose up and still now are fighting against the injustices of environmental racism. When thousands were killed in Puerto Rico and still could not get aid or support, they made up in their mind they would just do it. When little black and brown babies found themselves in cages on the borders of the United States of America, yearning to breathe free, they decided they would just do it. When it is that those would climb up a flagpole in South Carolina to pull down the Confederate side of injustice in America, we would just do it. When it is that the prison pipeline has one million black men and women under penal supervision and in Baltimore this week they opened up a 30 million dollar juvenile detention center but will not give funding to Morgan and the Coppin and the Eastern Shore just to the 20 pastors that sat around Donald Trump and did not question him on anything on integrity and character and honor just do it if you don't believe in something you will fall for anything and so we came on buses from over ohio and pennsylvania and baltimore and new york and georgia and washington dc to tell donald trump if you're gonna resign just do it 18 months ago now i know he's got a messed up past life present whatever the case may be because of his infidelity issues and wayward pp and carrying on and stuff like that but you know what the man is talking about people like you this man is saying something for people like you and we just don't care we don't like that type of stuff we don't like it and you know what's funny you know what's funny is even with all of that <laughs> even with all of that with all of that being said about Colin, about Jamal, people that are trying to make waves and stand up for us. We don't want none of that. You're seriously, like we complain, like literally. I woke up this morning and I just, I came to the conclusion. We're no different from our ancestors, the children of Israel who walked this earth so many thousands of years ago and murmured and complained about the daylight. Oh, it's too hot. God gave us shade in the daytime. Oh, it's too cold. God gave us clouds of fire by night. Oh, it's this. And it, we hungry and God gave us manna and all those things like that. Baby, we are some, we are some hard headed people. We will always be murmuring and complaining, but I'm going to tell you something. I had this big, I begged and I pleaded with God. I said, Lord, whatever you do, I ain't even lying. Whatever you're about to do in this season, the next season, please don't forgive me. I'm, I'm like, serious, like, please make sure that I'm on the other side of your wrath. And I'm being serious about that. You know why I said that? Because I've talked about wanting to buy them. Don't get me wrong. I drug the hell out of that lady. I ain't gonna lie. I did. I talked about Brian Carr. Done the same thing to Sub. You hear what I'm trying to tell you? I done the same thing to Sub. I talked about Marvin, Bishop Marvin and Wyatt. Who else I talked about? I talked about a whole bunch of people, including this new girl, Kimberly Daniels. Okay, I talked about all of them. But at the same time, what I said was not a lie. So then some preachers, you know, preachers get on, especially some, you know, my, my folks get on, you ain't got nothing good to say about the church. You ain't got nothing good to say about the pastors. Well, let us not forget, hello, let us not forget that while we're sitting up here mad about pastors going to go meet 45 and talk about prison reform, let, let's, let's remember this thing right here, that just not too long ago in Chicago, it was pastors having a secret meeting just to be, uh, make sure they secure their seat, make sure they secure their bag.
Well, it's a lot of young black men being gunned down on the south side of Chicago, don't you think? South and west side. What about property taxes? Hold on, we listen. We want to hear. Don't touch me. Oh, wait a minute. Y'all got it going on in this joint. God bless everybody. Y'all got it going on, pastors. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. You're going to regret it. Wow, that guy right there. JB, huh? What we think. Hold on. So all the homies in the street Wait a minute. Don't touch him. Don't touch him. I don't want to have that hat on. Oh, got some pastors up in here, huh? Hey, everybody chill, everybody chill. Got some pastors up in here. It. We want to listen. Let, let the man say what he got to say. We want to hear what he got to say. We want to hear what he got to say, JB. Yeah. Meeting with these black yeah. pastors. Off, man. Don't let them front you, Ty. Right, right. Turn that off. Turn that off, man. Wow, it ain't got quiet now. It ain't got quiet now that the young folks we got up in here. I got a brother standing in front of me. That's ridiculous. Hey, man. Hey. Wow. Hey. Don't touch me. You got to touch him. Hey, brother. Brother, you better watch yourself. You better watch yourself. No, no, no. That's a wrong decision, Pastor. I'm going to beat that spirit at your ass, Pastor. I'm going to beat that motherfucking spirit at your ass, Pastor. You better watch who you touch. You better watch who you touch. That's a guarantee, motherfucker. Oh, what you talking about? You better not make a mistake. I guarantee you. Go to the cold. I'm going to touch you. I'm going to touch my right hook, that motherfucker. I'm going to right hook that motherfucker. Come on, Pastor. Like that. Don't Come on, Pastor. I'm a white like that. Don't do it like that. Don't do it like that. Don't do it, Pastor. Don't do it. Come on, Pastor. Do it. I'm gonna rock your ass. Come on, Pastor. Touch me if you want to. Come on, Pastor. I'm gonna rock your ass, motherfucker. Come on and touch me. Come on and touch me, motherfucker. Come on and touch me. Come on and touch me. Touch me again. Touch me again. You protecting the motherfucker that's oppressing your dumb ass, motherfucker. That's what you're doing. You touching the motherfucker that's oppressing your ass, nigga. I got you. Let's go. Come on. Let's go. Come on. No, no, no. Step outside, Pastor. Hey, son. Be cool. Get up out of here, man. I'm going to sit my ass in here like a taxpaying resident. Now touch me again. Can I get this? See who's sitting right here? I'm sitting over here. Look, man. You better get my out of here. She came in on them girls. Come on, bro. I'm sitting down as a resident. You're not gonna sit me. You're not gonna. You're not gonna deny me. I'm sitting down as no resident. Let another motherfucker touch me up in this motherfucker again. Touch me again in this motherfucker. Watch how I go down. I want to sit down as a resident. I want to talk to the, the candidate that's running for governor, stand up in the noise. JB Lamar Deshaun Quincy Record want to talk to you as a taxpayer resident in the state of Illinois. I want to know your platform. I want to know what you have to offer to the black community. I want to know your platform. Let's listen to it. Let's listen to it. Let me sit down. Sit down, brother. Sit down. They listen to it. Come on, man. So that's why I'm telling y'all. I ain't saying nothing disrespectful. I came in. You say I'm not saying disrespectful. I ain't saying nothing. Wow. Wow. Yo, man, yeah, Gator tell me. Wow. You out of order, nigga. Hey, Gator, I ain't. You out of order. Where that one at? He's a grown man. He's a grown man. He's trying to take care of some bitch. We got our own cat right now. He's out of order. We look. He's out of order. We look. He's out of order. He's out of order. He's out of order. Wow. We don't need that. Wow. Our own cow fighting us. And you know what it just says to me? That there are pastors out here that don't care about you. Honestly, that don't care about you. They don't care about you. All they care about is they seat. They forward no more. You know? And I'm just like, wow. You know, like, I thought I thought the shepherds, and I ain't gonna lie, you know, people say, well, hi, you, you ain't no pastor, baby. I've been, I've pastored before. I know the work. I know what it's like. You're supposed to be out here protecting your sheep. Hear me? You're supposed to be out here protecting your sheep, but yet and still you're offering them up to the slaughter. Not no, you're being led, baby. No, here you go. Here you go. You need another one? Here you go. You need another one? Here you go. We're offered up to the, we're offered up. We're offered up easily. 
And I'm just like, the shepherd, at least what the Bible say, because y'all Bible people, you Bibles, the shepherd is supposed to care for the sheep, right? The shepherds are supposed to care for the sheep. You're supposed to be dirty down there with the sheep. That's what you're supposed to do. You are touchable, not untouchable. Feel what I'm saying? You're touchable. The shepherds made sure that if the sheep went wayward, that you went to go get the sheep. And no matter where the sheep were, you went and to go get them and clean them up and bring them back in. But see, the problem is we got a bunch of sheep that are shepherds. So how can, how can what you, oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Wow. But see, our people, our people are so, are so, to, to some degree, a lot of them are very ignorant to the fact of what, what's really going on. Half of them know what's going on, but they want you to be quiet. They're rather for people like me to be quiet because why? Oh, you're this, you're that. But is what I'm saying a lie? Or you just don't like the fact of what I'm saying? Is that what it is? I, I can deal with the fact of you not liking what I'm saying and, and understand that you don't like what I'm saying. That's the reason why you don't like me. I can hear that and I can deal with that because a lot of, it is just what it is, honestly. It is just what it is. And you know, it, for everybody that's jumping out here want to be a pastor or a bishop or whatever the case may be, you have to understand the word that comes behind being a pastor. What that word means. You don't understand that when you pastor somebody, you have to watch them. You don't get to stay at home and, and eat Fig Newtons and, and popcorn and get fat for the rest of your life. No, you have to work. You have to work. It's not an easy job. You got to work. That's okay. I guess we invest more in funerals. We invest more in funerals when people posted up here want to be sitting in chairs and caring on why they dead up here looking crazy and caring on and stuff like that. I mean, we invest more trying to look good after, after life than we do in our present life. We invest more money. We invest more money in looking good after death than we do before death. You invest thousands of dollars in looking good in a casket that you will never see. You invest so much money in going into a grave, a vault, a mausoleum to look good for some people that probably never cared nothing about you. Oh, we want to have us a good bishop's funeral. Uh, and half these folks don't even want to pay. They don't want to pay because, you know, they, 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 it, it's taking money out their pocket. But they'll invest more money and laying in a in, in a box than they do because what how you die and how, what you're representing when you're dead should be the life that you lived. Or you want to have a pretty funeral? Well, how how did you live before you died? Pastors, bishops, how did you live? Oh, ain't nobody don't nobody want to hear that part. Don't don't nobody want to hear that part. I get it. I understand. I understand. So, hypothetically, hypothetically speaking, let's just say Brian Carnes, something happened to Prophet Brian Carnes. Oh, baby, y'all gonna throw out the red carpet for this man's funeral. How did you live? Oh, my God, you preached the thousands. Oh, shekorororororobo, rebo, shekorororororobo, and you called something down from heaven and Folks fell out up under the unction of something and carrying on and stuff. Oh, we're going to have a beautiful fume. How did you live? How did you live? Oh, we got Dr. Warren all out here and carrying on. And y'all talking about, all oh, you just, no, I was letting you know. Let me finish my thought. Let me finish my thought. You got Dr. Warren all out here, you know, with, with just all the stuff going on. How did you live? 
How did you live? You started out right. You started out right. And somewhere along, you missed it. Somewhere along, you got off. And everybody want to get mad at me. I got folks within the church that's upset with me. That try to do devious things against me because of things that I'm saying. Because of what I have said. You don't like the fact you don't like the fact of what I said about your favorite preacher, but it was true. You'd rather sit up out here, you'll get mad at Colin Kaepernick for standing against a whole football stadium full of ignorant people. But your pastor's out here doing ignorant stuff on a daily basis. And you'll still sit there and support him. I'm praying for the man of God. I'm praying for the man of God. I'm praying for the man of God. Okay. You keep on. You, you keep on. You see this stuff. And for all you ignorance out here, you ain't never got nothing nice to say. What is there nice to say? Oh, I like your haircut. Girl, I'm some cute earrings. What, what you want me to say? What do you want me to say? What is there to say? When your pastor is more concerned about a political position or, or making sure that they're good and set for life, then your well-being. The reason why, the reason why these members act the way that they do is because the shepherd does not care about them. So for years, we've always called pastors crooks and crooked and conniving. For years, we've always called them that. And we have pastors who try to make things look a certain way and change the spectrum of what's real, what was going on. And in and, and, and some kind of way, they fall right back in that thing again. Maybe it's the love of money. Maybe it's the love of money. The love of money is the root of all evil. Money's not evil, but it's the love of it. Maybe the fact that, maybe the fact that you've never had before, nigga. Maybe it's the fact that you've never had uh, $200,000, $500,000 in the bank before. And you feel like going to stunt. You want to go stunt. You want to go stunt on these hoes. I'm going to show them what it looked like to be blessed. Why can't you just be blessed? You ain't got to have rings on every finger. You don't have to have be blinging and the biggest hats and all this other stuff like that. Be blessed. Store up for the next generation. Teach your people how to live. But you know it again. 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 <laughs> again. This, this, is, this, is, this is maybe my soapbox. Maybe the fact, because I said this to somebody last night. Maybe the fact, and I, am I in the right key? No, I ain't in the right key. That's that's looking. Mm -mm. That's the right key right there. Maybe, maybe for the fact that our oppressors who put us in this situation are going to be the ones who's going to have to show us the way to get out of this situation. Maybe, maybe, maybe that's what it is. I can't get no help. Man, I, I, I just, man, I need to go to B flat. I, maybe, maybe that's going to be what's going to happen. Because obviously our oppressors, since being they were the ones who put us in the situation, maybe they're going to be the ones who's going to lead us. Because we ain't got good, I mean seriously, like real talk. Like maybe, maybe our oppressors are going to be the one that's going to show us, hey, y'all need to do it this way. Because we don't listen to, we don't listen to us. We don't listen to us. Maybe the white folks, okay? Maybe the good white folks are going to be the ones, hey, y'all don't need to eat this. You know what? Pastor John said we don't need to eat this. And you know what he said? This is kind of in the Bible too. You know, I didn't know that yet. And you're going to do exactly what they say. You will. You're going to do exactly what they say. You're going to do how they say it, when they say it, and everything else like that. It's going to be white people. I y'all keep on y'all mark my words. It's going to be white people that's going to direct you 
back to the place of authority that you're supposed to be in. Don't nobody want to hear that. Don't don't nobody don't nobody want to hear that part right there. It's going to be them them very same hate us white people that's going to redirect you back into the place that you're supposed to be. Because you're so busy trying to kiss their behind. And they and some of them are very busy trying to show you, "Hey, we know the truth." And we want things to be set right because the things that happened to you in the past, baby, ain't have nothing to do with me. Okay. Now, every, I'm going to tell you something. Every white person ain't bad and every black person ain't good. So trust and believe that on that right there. Because just like you got white folks out here, just like you got white folks out here that's out here hateful, evil, baby, you got some niggas that's out here hateful, envious, and all that other stuff like that. So, baby, here's the thing like this. Why y'all worried about the smoke that's going on right now, especially with the smoke with Marvin Winans? Baby, don't be confused. Don't be deceived. Marvin Winans is just trying to keep his seat. That's all. Marvin Wine is trying to keep his seat. Baby, he is, he is, he is stacked up. He is breaded up. He's good. So if his church go down right now, he is good. But he's sold enough CDs. Y'all crazy Negroes, y'all didn't y'all didn't y'all didn't made him what he is right now. It is what it is. It is what it is. So again, like I said, I know y'all don't like what I have to say. I know. But baby, I'ma keep talking. Huh? I'ma keep talking. Cause that thing is getting good. Yeah, it is. It, that thing that thing is getting good. You know why it's getting good? It's because I've realized one thing, and that is that you don't want truth. You don't. You, you really don't. You talk a good game about wanting to be in the right place with God. Want to be in the right place and in the right time. Want to be in the right season. Yeah. All that stuff like that, but yet and still, you talk the talk, but you don't walk it. You, you, you talk it like I walk it. Talk it like I walk it. I mean, it's the same thing with with all these po these black politicians. You talking like we walking. Talk you talking a good game, but then when you get in place, all of that stuff go out the door. All of that stuff go out the door. But you know, I'm reminded of a scripture. <laughs> I'm reminded of a scripture, church folks, and, and the scripture says this. Oh, well, actually, it's not a scripture, but it is a scripture, but it's a song. Song says, oh, Peter, if you don't let me wash your feet, you will have no part of me. Sometimes we got to go to the very root of the issue, the very bottom, the core, the, the low part and start washing away stuff. Mm hmm. Because your feet is the reason why you step and walk into every area. Sometimes you got to wash your feet and get all that stuff that you've been walking in off of you. Peter, feed my sheep. Peter, feed my sheep. Peter, feed my sheep. You worried about having... Decladins and and, and 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 fancy things and name brands and big name brands and red bottoms and bloody shoes and carrying on and stuff like that. But at the same time, you pastors, especially y'all that escaped over there to Guyana, folks who out here buying you cars and stuff like that, buying your cars, you how. how Feed my sheep. We got all type of antics and crazy stuff out here to just make the people go, woo! Pimps and hoes. Pimps and hoes. I make you shake and you be over there jiggling. I make you shake, you over there jiggling and just throwing it back. Bow, 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 bow. That's, that's, that's all we do. That's what we do in church. Pimps and hoes. Pimps and hoes. Pimps and hoes. Pimps and hoes, pimps and hoes, pimps and hoes. I, let me tell you, so I, I've never in my life seen such craziness. People being sent to be my friend just so they can try to find out what I'm doing, find out my business so they can sit up here and try to destroy me. Hey, it is what it is. But trust me when I tell you, you'll reap what you sow. 
You'll reap what you sow. People being sent to be my friend so they can find out who I am and what I do and the source of my income so they can try to go and destroy my name, my business, my source of income. Hey, that's fine, baby. But let me tell you something. Karma? Hmm. Karma? Oh, it's gonna, it'll, it'll come back, baby, and hit you in your ass. And karma is, it. she got a name, baby. It's called bitch. Yeah, karma is that. You may not like that, but it's the truth. You don't like the fact of what I said about these crooked behind leaders? I don't care who it is, baby. I don't care if it is family. Listen, if you wrong, you wrong. You need to talk about your, baby, if you wrong, you're just wrong. I've never been in agreement with crooked leaders because I feel like this. When you're a shepherd, you hold a responsibility. When you're a shepherd, you hold a place over the people and you're responsible for the lives of the people that you're overseeing. You're not just a pastor to look good, to put a suit on, to put some nice shoes on and things of that nature. You're a pastor to lead. Peter, feed my sheep. But Peter's out here hanging with the wolves. Peter's out here hanging with the snakes. Peter's out here dealing with the crookedness. Peter's out here crooked too. So, so, so my thing is this right here. My thing is this. If, if we can't get this together, and, I, and I'm being honest about that. If we cannot get this together, well, how, how, we, are we really going to change a generation? Seriously, are, are we seriously, are we really going to change a generation? I don't think so. I, I don't, I don't think so. I, I feel bad. Um, I feel bad for us. I feel bad for us because we don't get it. We don't get it. <laughs> we don't get it. We don't get it. We don't get it. And we just continue on doing the same thing. Um, hold on, y'all. I'm trying to type something really quick. We keep on doing the same thing over and over again. And then we turn around and we just say, um, uh, or we say, we just going to pray and God's going to fix it. God's going to fix it. Why, why does God need to fix it when he's giving you the power? The problem is we are spoiled. That's, that's what it is. We're spoiled. We're spoiled. Mm -hmm. We're spoiled. We're spoiled. We're spoiled people. We're spoiled people. And we like being spoiled. <laughs> Ironically, we like being spoiled. We like the fact that, you know, um, <clears throat> we like the fact that we can sit up here and do wrong and God forgives us seven times seven. We like that. We like the fact that we can sit up here and, and do evil and, and, and kill folks spiritually and in the natural. God will forgive us. Oh, but baby, you will have to give an account for those things. Everything that you did corruptive crazily towards somebody else because they got your seat in church or they supposedly took your man. God said that was my man. You, you, you'll, pay, you'll pay for it. Or at least you'll give an account for it. Not say you don't get in trouble, but you'll give an account for it. Some of y'all get saved afterwards or whatever the case may be. But it is what it is, y'all. Our pastors teach us to go repent, but we don't change. Go repent, but we don't change. Just repent. Just repent. Just repent. Ain't no change. 
Ain't no change. We've been taught this. We've been taught this. And we not changing. You so concerned about the homosexual. Uh, yeah, you, you so concerned about the homosexual. But you not concerned about the whole in you. Oh, I, I just probably said something right there. I know I got somebody mad. Somebody trying to report the video. That's fine too. You so concerned about the homosexual, but you're not concerned about the whole in you. Take out the whole in homosexual and be concerned about the whole in you. Be concerned about the crackhead in you. Brian Carson made a whole CD. Put a whole CD out. And again, I ain't jealous. But again, just like y'all can still be out here supporting R. Kelly and all this other stuff, y'all do the same thing for him. R. Kelly make beautiful music. Still does not substitute the fact of what he's done and all the craziness that he's been involved in. Don't take away that. Brian Carnes is a good emotionalizer. So don't take away from the things that he's done. <laughs> raggedy CD. Raggedy CD. Honey, it's just going to make you feel good because it's old school music. It's old school music. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, <laughs> Negroes want to be down on their knees praying and God do this to King Jives. God destroy him. God get him right now. God do this to him. God destroy his life. Destroy his business. Oh, you see, that's what happened to his mom because he was out here talking about Brian Kahn. So if my mom is a thief, you well, we already know Brian Carr is a thief. So it is what it is. I guess both of them in good goddamn company. Right? Okay. Like if 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 it is true. I don't care if they is, if they did convict her, there's a whole bunch of innocent folks that's convicted. I know, Miss Teresa, I said a bad word. You gotta go. I know. I mean, you gotta go. Bye. It is what it is. It is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is. God bless y'all. Um, y'all do whatever y'all need to do. Um, but let me tell y'all something. There is there's a saying. I want you to hear me real good. Hear me real good when I say this because you're going to get this caught up on the replay. I want you to hear me this real good. Prayers is a form of magic. It really is magic. It's a spiritual seance or spiritual thing that we do. Every time you pray evil and damnation on somebody else, trust me, it comes back to you. There's a saying when it comes down to magic, there's a price that you will pay when it comes down to magic. So what you put out, you better make sure you can stand when it comes back to you. Every evil working, every evil talking, every spell, every ritual that you put out on somebody else, doggone it, you better be prepared because when it comes back to visit your house, you better be prepared for that. I don't care how much washing and cleansing that you do, you better be prepared. Just like the, even the Bible said, eye for an eye. You better be prepared because your day can come. People trying to wake you up from the evilness in the world. And instead of you being woke up from the evilness in the world, you want to pray spells. And honey, Negroes take their Bible and, and, and chant spells on somebody else. You better be prepared. Mm-hmm. You send evil workings and stuff like that towards other people. I try to tell folks, I try to tell people that there's good and evil in everything. Trust me when I tell you, there's good and evil in everything. Mm -hmm. It is. You take this very Bible and you read scriptures to send evil spirits and evil doings towards somebody else. You think that's good? You think that's good? It's all good. I, hey, I'll be, every, well, I won't be. But, you know, you call me every sissy punk faggot. That's, that, it is what it is. But everything, I'm, baby, I'm like Seely now. Everything you've done to me has already been done to you. You may think you're living now, but everything you've done to me 
has already been done to you. Mark my words. I ain't worried about it. Keep on supporting the foolishness. God bless you. Whatever God you serve, keep on supporting the foolishness. You think I'm, oh, I'm taking too long? You watching. You watching. But trust and believe me when I tell you this right here. What's done will come back to you. Believe that. Anyways, y'all, have a wonderful day. I'm going to have a good day. And again, be easy. One love from me to you. All right. Oh, make sure you subscribe to this channel. Make sure you follow this channel. And um, we'll see each other again. One love. Hey there, I'm Demario Dimes. How are you doing? Thank you so much for considering DiMaggio Graphics and Media Production. We are your one-stop shop for your graphic and your print needs. Hey, listen, we do specialize in funeral programs. Matter of fact, we do a lot of graphic. We do, we do all sorts of things. Anniversaries, church anniversaries, business um, events, business picnics, barbecues, all kind of things like that. We do graphics for everything. But anyways, we do specialize in funeral programs. Memorabilia that's going to be around for a very long time, and that's going to last when your loved one has left this side and transitioned to the other side. From myself, Demario Jives, and the staff of Dimaggio Graphics Media Production, I just want to say thank you so much for considering us. And you can also visit us on the World Wide Web at www.dimaggio.com. That's D-E-M-A-J-I-O.com. And also, you can look us up online, on Facebook, on any social media site. Facebook, Instagram, uh, LinkedIn. Look us up. We will greatly be there for you in the time of your need. Thank you again for considering us, and we look forward to serving you. Showtime! Kingsbury!